So this week we're reading Chomsky's Language and Problems of Knowledge. And this is going to be the last lecture on our segment on meaning and use. So when we started our segment on meaning of use, we started with Wittgenstein. And Wittgenstein, as we sort of saw, had a pretty extreme view. But in a certain sense, there's really nothing more to meaning than use. We've explored some intermediate views since then, but this week we're going to be exploring a view basically at the other end of the scale. Because Chomsky basically thinks that at the end of the day, use doesn't have that much to do with language, or not as much as you might have expected. Because an awful lot of what's interesting about language is innate. The state of having a language is just for your brain to be in a certain sort of way. And the possibilities of language, the, possib the, kind of, the possible states that your, might, your brain might be in as a result of being exposed to language, those are pretty heavily constrained by the initial state of your brain. And this initial state of your brain and the constraints it puts on languages and language learning, Chomsky thinks is that, that question is the, probably the most important question that linguistics and philosophy of language has to answer. So we're going to work in four stages today. The very first thing Chomsky does in his essay is he argues that the ordinary notion of language, that the notion of language that we talk about in day-to-day -day life, is not quite the same thing as we're studying when we study language scientifically or philosophically. So we're going to first go through his arguments for thinking that and say something about what he thinks that a scientific concept of language should be should look like. And the thing we're going to stress is that Chomsky thinks that a scientific concept of language must be cognitive in a certain way. After that we're going to move on to the distinction between I languages and E language. E language thinking of language as an E language is pretty close to the way that we've been thinking about language for a lot of this class and especially in the last few weeks and and especially especially when we talked about Lewis last week. We're going to see that Chomsky distinguishes E language from a different thing he calls I language which is really a sort of mental state, a high level brain state. And he thinks that it's really the latter, the I languages, the high level brain state that we should be interested in when we're studying language and then that this notion of E language has basically very little of any theoretical interest. After that we're going to see a little bit more about what he thinks about what an eye language really is by thinking about the question of whether being having an eye language is having an ability or whether it's something more like having a state of knowledge represented in your brain. And Chomsky's going to argue it's the latter. We should think we should think of having an eye language as something much more like having knowledge represented in your brain somehow. Finally though it's sort of off the main thread, we're going to consider this very striking claim Chomsky makes at the end of the paper that basically all of our concepts are innate. So the natural idea is that might be that maybe we come equipped with some concepts of the world, but a lot of the concepts that we use in our thoughts by the time we're adults are learned from our experience in the world. Chomsky actually denies this. He thinks that basically all the concepts we have are innate, with the consequence that all the possible concepts that any human might have were pretty much ha have pretty much been had by any human at any point in time. So this is a really rather striking claim. Most of you probably want to reject it initially and find it pretty absurd. I'm going to spend some time outlining what I think the argument is here. We're going to spend a little bit of time thinking about why it might not be quite as absurd as you might initially think, but then I am going to consider some objections to, the, to this thesis in closing. So that's what the plan for the lecture is going to be.